Welcome everybody once again to another Haunted Saturday. That's right, it is mega strange time. Here we are, Derek and Johnny, back for another deep dive into the paranormal. And today, we're talking wizards. I wish I had a, like a, a wand or something. I think we have like a big wizard hat of stick now, whatever, it's fine. We're we're <laughs> workshopping spots on the fly live yeah. on camera. You're not going to see any wands or wizard hats oh, uh, no. because we didn't think about it. Today we're talking about wizards. Uh, this was a, intended to be a follow up to our extremely popular episode from a few months ago. Yeah, when we did witches, uh, witches baby. It was like the most evil witches in history or something like that. You know what I found though in researching today's episode? Uh huh. Are wizards even real? Do wizards really exist? Hear me out. This is what I mean. When we were researching the witches episode, yeah. it was like, this woman was a witch. That woman was a witch. Oh, these sisters were famous witches. Oh, a witch once put a spell on this king. Oh, did you know that in this town they had witch trials? They went witch hunting. <laughs> yeah, they killed dozens of witches. And it's all well documented. Even yeah. even. When we did the vampires episode, it was like on this date in this town, there was this claim of this vampire attack. But when you look at wizards and you look, go to research wizards, it's like mm, wizard is somebody who does magic. I, I think and that's, oh. that's it. Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, I think we talked about this a little bit on the witch episode. Uh, I think it sh goes to show you just the place uh, uh, society was with women and men because like there weren't like, oh, you're a wizard. Uh, drown them. <laughs> it was oh, like, let's do a wizard test. Yeah. Hey, the wizard test is I'm going to shoot you in the head with a bullet. Yeah. If you live, you're a wizard. There wasn't any of that. It was just like, oh shit, Merlin's kind of cool. And that's about it. So I feel like there wasn't a lot of wizards. Yeah. There you weren't wizard, wizard hunts. <laughs> sexism. Good old fashioned sexism. The magical women are evil. The magical men are, are cool. legendary. Yeah. Uh, there were stories of wizards here and there but yeah honestly they were very hard to find it was either some supposed wizard from three thousand years ago and then they don't even really give details about specific events that this yeah. person did that made them believe to be a wizard or it was something like alistair crowley and just way too much information and they're not even getting into the interesting stuff you know like what were these rituals he did what were these satanic spells he would it was like no nah, he would go to egypt and then he founded his religion <laughs> thelema uh, and then he joined the order of the golden dawn and he became the leader and it's just kind of a checklist of things he did uh i think in the future maybe it was very dry yeah dry history in the future we could maybe cover like alchemists i don't know if that would be a better like there'd be more stuff on alchemists. We're going to have wizards. to dial it in specifically yeah. to like a wizard is just a broad term yeah. for a person who does magic. And then within that, there are little subdivisions of specific magic alchemy. Yeah. Being one of them. Yeah. And that's kind of what I did today. Mm -hmm. Um, Excuse me. I'm chewing my gum here. I uh, <laughs> I just wanted to get a good chew and, you know, really get the double mint. I wanted to taste the spearmint and the peppermint. I've been there where, like, you put a piece of gum in your mouth and, like, someone starts talking to you and you just kind of just shove it, in, like, in your mouth. And then, like, after they're done, you kind of get some good chews on. What am I doing with this gum? Let me get this out of here. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. <stay> away. <laughs> Did you just throw it into the void? I just... Nice. Right, I'll get it later. I can't wait till someone finds that. So a specific subsection of magic, you know... Throughout history, sometimes things have been considered magical or paranormal because yeah. we didn't understand them. And then as science came to understand them, they were moved out of the realm of magic into an actual science. Think of chemistry, mm. chemical reactions, you know. Um, a chemist hundreds of years ago was basically a spell crafter. Yeah. Now it's more of a science. The same thing happened with electricity. Mm. And I want to talk about the electric wizard. The man himself, the most famous Electromancer of all time, I would argue, Nikola Tesla. I'm going to be getting into Nikola Tesla stories. A modern day wizard, if you will. And Johnny, you have a modern day wizard to talk about yes. as well. 
Uh, this is something I've wanted to cover for a long time, so I kind of use this as an excuse to dive in, but I'm going to be covering Rasputin. That's great. Um, I looked into Rasputin a little bit. I didn't yeah. get too much into it because I knew you were going to be mm-hmm. covering Rasputin for this episode, but I didn't know that Rasputin was born after Abraham Lincoln had been assassinated. Yeah, you know, that was crazy for me, too. Like, I was uh, uh, doing the research. I didn't realize how modern it was. Yeah. Like, like, all that stuff happened in, like, the 19th century. (laughs) We think of Abraham Lincoln as a relatively modern president, at least in my mind. Me, too. Maybe it's because he's so popular in American culture. We have the animatronic at Disneyland. Yeah. We study the Gettysburg Address in school. Everybody has seen photographs of Lincoln. Everybody could probably draw a shitty shitty drawing (laughs) of Lincoln from memory. Yeah. Uh, the movie Lincoln just came out a few years ago. He's still very relevant. He's still talked about. Yeah. Um, he's on our money. He's on our money. People still talk about Lincoln. Yeah. Like with relevance to what's happening in today's issues. Mm. Um, Rasputin, I always assumed was at least 200 years before Lincoln. Me too. Come to find out everything you've ever heard from Rasputin happened at least 50 years after Lincoln had died. Rasputin was around during World War One. That's wild. Right? Isn't that crazy? I was like, oh, shit. I mean, there's there's someone out there like writing a comment like, oh, you guys didn't know that? Like, oh, I don't know. I, I never mean, looked into it. You don't know this stuff until you yeah. research it. You kind of hear it uh, throughout your life, but you don't really look into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and to be real, I didn't know that Nikola Tesla was as modern as he was. Mm. But uh, uh, that's, I, I guess for Nikola Tesla, he kind of always existed in this time this period outside of time yeah. in my mind, because I knew that he invented the Tesla coil, that he was doing experiments with electricity. I knew he was a contemporary of Edison. Yeah. I knew that as well. Yeah. But I still couldn't like give you a guess as to when he was born or when he died. Do you know? I, I could give you a guess right now. Yeah. I, I, I imagine he was born in like 1850. That'd be my guess. You're pretty close. You're pretty close. Yeah, you nailed yeah, it. Yeah, he yeah. was born in uh, 1856. Oh, shit. I was really close. Yeah. I didn't even, I just pulled that out of my ass. What decade do you think he died in? 1900s? 1920s. That You just gave a 20-year uh, <laughs> window, and uh, you uh, are way off. You're off by oh, decades. Oh, shit. So he probably died in like... You're off by decades. Like the, the 60s, 70s? No, he died in, during World War II. Okay, so 40s? Uh-huh. We'll get okay. into all of that. I well, who should older. go first? Do you want to hear about uh, Rasputin? Or do you want to... I want to know what you got for Rasputin. Okay. Actually. All right. I don't I usually get to go first. I'm yeah, you get is, to go first today. This feels good. Um, all right, so I kind of start in the beginning here. Yeah. So uh, he was born in uh, 1869. Uh, is he from Russia? He is from Serbia. He was born in Serbia as a, I had to Google this term, but. No uh, way. What? Tesla was from, uh, he was a Serbian as well. All right. Dude, Serbian wizards. Okay. We're calling this episode Serbian <laughs> wizards unofficially. Uh, he was born as uh, a, a muzek, muzek, which translates to like peasant. Okay. In Russian. Go figure. Um, so he kind of like lived his life in Serbia. He uh, and then as he got older, he just randomly decided that he wanted to go on a religious pilgrimage. Okay. Um, to become a healer. Uh, there's a couple of reasons people put together, but no one, everyone's kind of uncertain why he decided to just do this. Well, I would assume that when you're a peasant, you the only wealthy person you're interacting with is uh, somebody who runs a church. That is true. Uh, the the biggest one people keep pointing to, which was cracking me up, is that uh, he wanted to escape his village because he stole a horse. Okay, and he didn't want to get like punished for that. That's uh, punishable by death. Exactly. Uh, some other people claimed he saw visions of the Virgin Mary and and uh, was like, I, I need to become a religious healer. And then uh, uh, some other people theorized that he kind of heard of the student. Uh, there's so many Russian names in here. I'm going to butcher them. Uh, Maliti uh, Zabor- Zaborovsky. Uh, some say he like kind of saw her kind of become a religious healer. Uh, th- she was a theolo- theologist and uh, okay. he, he was kind of inspired and was like, 
I want to do that as well and kind of like went on this pilgrimage. But uh, the thing that was messed up about this is that he uh, decided to just like cast his old life aside. He had uh, been married. He was 28 at the time, by the way. He'd been married for 10 years and he had uh, multiple children. So he was just like, goodbye. I'm a religious healer now. This is what happens when you get married at 18. Exactly. And 10 years later, you're like, what am I doing? Ah, I need a, <laughs> I need a good story to get me out of this situation. Uh, let me just show you guys a photo of Rasputin real quick. Just in case you haven't seen this fucking evil. We're going to the close-up cam. Some man. people have been saying that they don't like the close-up cam. Have they? Uh, they say we should get an iPad. Yeah. But you know what? Nerd. Imagine scrolling through pictures of Bigfoot on an iPad, <laughs> zooming in. Look how big the foot is. Now, nah, we're all analog here. Old analog, school, baby. Like the X-Files. Like Mulder and Scully. You can go to the picture. Oh, sorry. I'm just vamping. <laughs> We've got actual photographs here. I don't know if that's in focus or not. What a handsome devil. Yeah. Oh, it's not an iPad. I can't do it. Uh, that's so not in focus. <laughs> this happens every time. I'm sorry. Hold it by yeah, the yeah, yeah. Go. Hell yeah. So this is fucking this is this Alan Moore looking motherfucker is Rasputin. Uh, v very evil looking. If I had to envision the devil or draw the devil, I would draw him looking like Rasputin. So I had heard that Rasputin was extremely charming. Yes. And that he had a charisma about him that made him extremely popular with people everywhere he went. Uh, yes. Sorry, I got and just papers. looking at that photo, it's clear that the, you know, the charisma comes through. I, I, I never really said his first name out loud, too, as like G George, Georgie, Georgie, uh, Grigori, Grigori. Gonna edit that out. Grigori no, Rasputin. You, you gotta keep that in. You gotta keep that in. Grigori Rasputin. Sorry. Um, it looks like it could be Georgie. Georgie. <laughs> if it was English, it probably would be Georgie Rasputin. But it's Russian, so it's Grigori. Grigori. Uh, anyway, so he uh, he went on this religious pilgrimage, and then he slowly started to gain prominence in Serbia and Russia uh, in the early 1900s, claiming that he would be able to resolve people's spiritual crises and anxieties. Jeez, I could use a little Rasputin in my life. Exactly. Me too. Hit me up, Rasputin. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what truly made him like extremely well known is that he uh, helped the Tsar at the time. Um, the Tsar Nicholas. Tsar. Oh, the the ruler of uh, the Russian Empire. Yes, uh, Tsar Nicholas II had a son. Now, do you pronounce Tsar with Tsar. a C or with a T? I prefer Tsar. the T. Tsar. I I mean I'm sure I'm butchering everything. I I usually just say Tsar. But it's spelled both Tsar. ways. Tsar. That sounds way better. Tsar. Um, there's some Russian people out there that are like Sar. cringing so hard right now. No, we're getting um, it right. We're nailing <laughs> it. We're doing him justice. So I'm, I'll, I'm going to use Tsar. Uh, Tsar Nicholas II had a son named Alec Alexei. I, I know that name because the guy who created Tetris has the same name. Um, Alexei had a, a medical issue. Uh, he like ha uh, was riding a carriage and uh, like I think he fell off the carriage. Yeah. And got a hemorrhage and uh, couldn't stop bleeding. Mm. And at the time, people didn't know what it was. Like, he was, like, in pain, couldn't stop bleeding. We know now that he he was uh, had uh, hemophilia. Okay. Uh, but at the time, they did not know what was happening. So Rasputin was summoned. Uh, I have a picture of when he was summoned here. He was summoned to the house of the Tsar. And that's him. Uh, this is the... Oh. Wrong side. This is the nurse, and this is the Sarina, and that's all her children. And Rasputin is there, uh, all in white. Uh, it looks like a psycho. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's fuck. Th this picture scared the shit out of me. I don't know if it's big enough for them to see. If Should it's we zoom in, hold it up. I'll zoom it in. Oh, you want me? Oh, uh, I'll zoom it in on the camera. Just hold it up there. Starting to think we need an iPad, bro. <laughs> Whoa. This is some evil look. Yeah, you can see all of it. There it is. That's the Sarina right there. I don't remember her name, and, the, and this is the nurse. And that's all her children. Anyway. 
Um, so yeah, he was asked to like come to the, the kingdom. I don't, I don't know the the term. Um, for that. I I actually uh I I did find out some research about mm-hmm. Rasputin, not to hijack mm-hmm. your story, but about this kid. What was the kid's name? Alexi. Alexi. Yeah. I heard that Alexi had been treated by doctors. Yeah. Uh, and they were giving him medicine. And Rasputin came and told them, like, stop giving him the medicine. Mm-hmm. And the Tsar did because they trusted Rasputin. Yeah. And Alexei ended up getting better once he stopped taking the medicine. Well, that's not the story that or, I mean, that probably did happen. But the story that spread was that he showed up, he prayed at his bedside, and then the next morning he was fine. Interesting, uh, because I was actually I had heard that they found out that what the doctors were giving him was a form of Tylenol. OK, which was actually they didn't know, but it was causing it was a blood thinner. It was causing his blood to. Oh, thin out yeah, yeah. More. And so Rasputin kind of took a gamble. Yeah. And was like throw the medicine away. And they did. But it ended up helping. Yeah. Because his blood got thicker and it the bleeding stopped yeah that that makes total sense it's it's crazy that it kind of like became more of a like more like magical story yeah uh which i think he wanted that uh when i was doing research some people claim that he had known about this disease prior and kind of like knew about it like had had heard what was happening to alexi and was like oh i know what this is okay and he kind of like played it up like oh i'll heal him um, but yeah, anyway, he, he prayed for him. And then the next morning that was, as the story goes, he, he healed and that was around 1907. Mm. So from there, so the Tsar uh, must've loved him. Exactly. So he became like kind of the Tsar's like right hand man. And he kind of rose to infamy. Like, uh, you know, you wouldn't see the Tsar without like Rasputin around. Um, so yeah, his healing powers brought him like considerable, uh, like status and power, uh, even in the court system. Um, as well as being, as I said, the SARS right hand man. Uh, but things didn't last forever. Uh, things slowly started to crumble as um, Rasputin started to get accused uh, as as for religious heresy. I had heard that even though Rasputin was, I don't know, a religious leader, we, yeah. could, we could call him, a uh, spiritual man, a man of God. Yeah. He refused to give up drinking and promiscuous sex. That's what I have here. Uh, yeah, he would, trigger warning here, uh, apparently he, he was kind of known for uh, raping. And oh, tr- trigger warning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say trigger warning. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He was known for it. Yeah, and uh, apparently it would be like followers of his as well, which was not cool. Uh, yeah, and and yeah, it, it was just getting known around town that he was kind of not a good dude. Well, that's where the religious heresy claims must have come from. And he would start to kind of use his political power for gain and all that jazz. Yeah. Um. So it slowly became known that he wasn't a good dude. And he had to go. And he had to go. The, the motherfucker fucked my mother <laughs> and he's got to go. I am doing this because I think the most famous thing about Rasputin is he's famously hard to kill. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm getting there. I know. I think any, <laughs> if you don't know, but you probably do, they tried to kill him and they had a hell of a time. So after uh, World War One, yeah. But now we know why he had to go. He had to go. After World War One, I, I don't know if I could do that voice. Uh, uh, Russia's economy was in decline and many blamed it on the Tsar and Rasputin because he was always around the Tsar. You couldn't see one without the other. So a lot of people pl- blamed a lot of the, the political missteps. Yeah, and he on, was always on both drunk of them. AF. Yeah. And having sex. Uh, so that led to a group of nobles led by, I'm going to try to say these names. Uh, Prince Felix Yusupov, Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich, Pavlovich, and uh, a right wing politician named Vladimir uh, I don't even think I pronounce. I'm not going to try to help yeah. you with these. Per- I, I could say them. I choose not to. Perishekovich. Perishekovich. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> enemies of Rasputin. Yeah, they d- they uh, decide that Rasputin's influence over the Tsarina threatened the Empire, and uh, and this dude's got to they, go. Yeah, they they decided they were going to plan to murder him on de- December 1916. Um, what was their plan? So how were they going to do it? Their plan was to invite him over and poison his food. Okay, pretty solid plan. Yeah. Because Wait, were they going to use cyanide? They were going to use cyanide. Nice, uh, so, where do you get cyanide I from? By the way, I mean World War One. I, I I mean, uh, I don't know. I think because I think they had the cyanide capsule. Oh, if I remember correctly, you're not supposed to eat the pits and seeds of of fruits mm. like a peach pit because it contains cyanide in it. Oh, the stone fruits. And I remember actually hearing this story in ancient Rome that they needed poison. So they ground up a bunch of peach pits uh, and took what was inside and mixed it into an elixir. And that's how they would make poison to like assassinate people. So you can get cyanide if, you, if, <laughs> if you're in a pinch. You can find it uh, if you know where to look. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, it's just taught you how to. Uh, yeah, I was about to say. I don't know. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we should be saying that. What? Peach? <laughs> if you don't know what's in a peach, that's your problem. Well, I'm going to get in trouble for educating you. Come on. I got my side nod down from Georgia. Anyway, that's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Uh, so they decided to poison him with cyanide. Uh, they, just, they, 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 I think they made cakes for him. And at first he didn't eat them. Mm, peach flavored cakes. And uh, over time, as they were talking to him, he, he's decided to eat uh, the, the cakes. And they, they waited and they waited. And my man was not dying. He yeah. was just chilling. Was and, he like, hmm, tastes good. Yeah, he's like, hmm. And then he like stroked his beard or something. I, I heard that he took uh, four servings of the poison pastries. Yeah. It was like, these are great. Yeah, and he did not die. So these dudes kind of were like at an impasse. They didn't know what to do. They panicked. They pulled out a gun and they shot his ass. Um, Point blank. Yeah. I think the story I heard was there was a, a, a cross on the wall. They told him to turn around and start praying. And then they shot him. Um so after that, they kind of reconvened. They went away. They're like, all right, what should we do? Uh, how do we get rid of the body? Uh, they figured it out. They come back. He was still alive. <laughs> he, came, he came up and tried to beat the shit out of them, uh, even though they shot him. And he kind of like almost escaped until they decided to tie him up and throw him in the river, in the freezing river. Um, but his body was found miles away days later. Uh, some people believe that he still didn't die and was able to kind of keep going, but I think he just kind of washed up. Um, didn't they stab him too? Oh, when he was shot uh, and he started attacking them and running away, they like mercilessly beat him and shot him tw- two more times. And then, yeah, I think they stabbed him a bunch as well uh, in that beating before they tossed him into the river. Uh, a- after, uh, though, his body was discovered and... I really didn't notice this, but uh, or I didn't know this prior, but even though people wanted him dead, uh, those dudes that killed him were still uh, exiled, and I think they were murdered as well, or they were killed. Oh, I think that like the Russian politicians wanted him dead. Yeah, the uh, aristocrats, but that the people were like big fans of his. Okay, uh, and I didn't were, know that like, they were outraged. So those dudes got exiled, and uh, I I don't know if they were jailed or not. I, I I heard somewhere I think I read that they were killed. I don't want to give misinformation, but I don't have it here. I just have they were exiled. Um, but at this point, Rasputin was dead after getting poisoned, shot multiple times, stabbed, thrown into a river. So if my man is no, and beaten and beaten. So if my man isn't some type of like actual demonic wizard, then I don't know who is. Uh, anyway, he was buried on January 2nd in a small church. Uh, side note, his wife and mistress and children were not invited. Mm. Don't get twisted. I just want to say, talk about bad hospitality on the part of the aristocrats. You invite a guy over for dinner. Imagine being Rasputin. Yo, you want to come eat some cakes? (laughs) And then people are like, like, and then you're like, fuck yeah, I love cake. And you're there and they're like, all right, here's your cake. And you're like, you going to have any? And they're like, no, it's all for you. And you're like, I would be so scared. Um, 
okay, weird, but thanks for the cake. <laughs> and then you're eating this cake, you're just macking on it, and everybody's just staring at you like, how you feeling? And you're like, I feel great. great. Thanks for the cake. I'm starting to feel weird about this party. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, hmm, they're getting fucking pissed off. And you're like, <laughs> nobody's eating this cake. Yeah. Everybody's looking at me fucking weird, getting mad at me for eating the cake. <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? And they're like, you see that cross on the wall? And you're like, what, that cross over there? Oh, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck? Somebody just shot me. <laughs> you just fucking shot me. And then there's no explanation. Yeah. No, they're like, yeah, they're talking. The fucking cakes didn't work. And you're over there dying, bleeding like, out. And they're like, what the fuck do you mean the cakes didn't work? And then you realize these motherfuckers, they've been trying to poison me. <laughs> so then you're bleeding out. You've been shot. Yeah. You, you're you pissed off at this point. You're like, this is the worst dinner party I've ever, <laughs> I've ever fucking been to. You know what? I'm going to give these guys a piece of my mind. You somehow manage to stand up. You walk over to them. And like anybody, like it's a normal reaction. You punch this motherfucker in the face. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're like, you fed me. You invited me here and gave me shitty cake and you shot me and you punch him. And what happens next? They punch you back and they punch <laughs> you back and then they grab a knife and they start stabbing you. And then they're not, they're not having enough fun stabbing you. So then they get a gun and they shoot you a couple of times. And now you're really thinking like, this is literally like the worst fucking dinner party I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> this is worse than like having to go to my family's house and they're asking me, so what are you doing with your life? Like this fucking sucks. I'm ready to go home at this point. I'm yeah. ready. To, I'm ready to go home. And then, then, then this group of guys, they start grabbing your feet. Yeah. And you're like, what are you doing now? <laughs> what could you even do? And they start tying your feet together. And you're like, this is fucking, I hope you're putting me in a carriage and sending me home. Yeah. And then they tie your hands together and then they take you over to the window and they start rocking you back and forth like a baby in a cradle. And you're like, so beat up, so stabbed, so poisoned. You don't even know what's going yeah. on. Next thing you know, <laughs> you're flying out a fourth story fucking window, crashing into the river below. Apparently he got out of the house when they, they did like this all happened in the snow. When they're beating them up and shit like you're, you ran into the snow po point is. That's got to be a shitty party. Yeah, that's, that's got to be one dinner you wish you didn't go to. Yeah, he was floating the river and he was like, um, check, please. I'm just I'm, I'm trying to think like, has anybody ever had a worse night than Rasputin on the night, <laughs> on the night he was killed? Well, <laughs> I want to add to this because every like thing I read, I don't know what maybe you know okay but every article every uh you know wikipedia page had to have in like bold text uh the the russian government did not steal his penis <laughs> and i was like what the fuck happened with his penis <laughs> so then all that happens and then at some point your penis gets stolen yeah they're i mean just the night of all nights tell me about it i need to do more research Oy but vey. every fucking article was like his penis was intact. They didn't steal his penis. Yeah, right. What the fuck? I don't did, believe it. Why were they stealing his penis? Yeah, right. I don't believe it, dude. Donald Trump went over, <laughs> had that secret meeting with Putin. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they they dismiss, <laughs> they dismiss all the other diplomats. It's just the two translators in there. And Putin hits this fucking button. Boop, and the wall opens up behind him. And he's like, the translator is translating what he says. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, you know what that is? <laughs> That's Rasputin's penis. <laughs> oh my god they don't think we got it but we got we it. we fucking got it we fucking got it we can get anything that's basically <laughs> the message we can get anything don't forget it uh <laughs> if all that wasn't enough there's uh, more there's oh, more shit. so like i said he was buried uh and he had a small kind of uh yeah. family was invited family right? was not invited uh they exhumed they were they were invited but they decided not to go based on the previous interactions with the Rasputin family and the Russian government. So uh, after Tsar Nicholas stepped down or whatever, I don't know what happened with him. And uh, there's a new Tsar. No, hold on. Oh. Bro, him and his entire family were assassinated. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know Side that. note. I know you were only uh, researching Rasputin. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I didn't look too much into this. Yeah. But I had heard that after Rasputin had saved Alexei, yeah. he gave the Tsar a prophecy mm. that said... 
uh, as long as you have me by your side, you will always have wow. uh, the Empire and your and and Alexi. Okay. But if you ever get rid of me, you'll lose Alexi and you'll lose the Empire. And after Rasputin was assassinated, the outrage against the Tsar and his family was so much, uh, they ended up being assassinated as well. I'm starting to realize that Rasputin was kind of like Russian Darth Vader. A little bit, a like, little bit. And then, yeah, the Tsar Nicholas was the, the fucking I don't have the details Palpatine. of how it all went down, but I know him and his family were killed. I think they were like shot in their own home. Oh my God. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. To, to just throw that out there. Uh, so after all that happened and there was a new Tsar in place, uh, they s- decided to, uh, you know, make Rasputin kind of a beacon for the old ways. Okay. And so they decided to exhume his corpse and burn it. Oh. Uh, as a, to show. Well, you got to make sure he's dead. That any support for the old regimen is dead. Yeah. And that is the story of Rasputin. Yeah. Actually, there is uh, Rasputin famously hard to kill. He passed that gene on to his descendants. Uh-huh. Uh, and one of them went on to become really famous here in America. Uh, and he became a singer. And he was the lead singer of the band The Heartbreakers. Uh, Tom Petty. And in fact, he was also famously hard to... <laughs> uh, he was free fall. Famously hard to pronounce dead. <laughs> Probably, I, I was like, I don't know where this is going. Probably due to his very loose relationship to Rasputin. Bad joke to end your segment. No, no, it was good. Just wanted to bring some le- levity to the Rasputin <laughs> bit. Uh, thanks for sharing that. That is uh, the Russian. Could we call him a wizard? I, I like the concept of calling. He, he's kind of like a political he, or he, uh, a, a healer. He performed magic. Yeah. When he told them to save Alexei. He's, he was going to heal them magically. And then, hard to kill. Perhaps perhaps magically hard to kill. Maybe he put a protection spell on himself. And maybe he made it. Maybe he survived. People claim to have seen him still alive days later, chilling out on the side of the river. You never know. Well, long beard. from one Serbian to the next, <laughs> let's talk about my character, for today's discussion, yeah. Nikola Tesla. People out there, you've heard of the name Tesla. You know that it is the electric car company owned by Elon Musk. You've probably heard of the Tesla coil. Maybe you've seen the Nick, uh, the Christopher Nolan movie, The Prestige, starring David Bowie yeah. as Nikola Tesla. I feel like everybody has some vague awareness of Nikola Tesla, the Tesla coils, him playing with electricity. We, we have one here. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a Tesla coil right back there. (laughs) Speak of the devil. Well, for those who don't know, Nikola Tesla was an inventor born um, in 1856. He was a Serbian American who came to America uh, at the age of 28, I believe, in the year 1884. Um, Nikola Tesla studied engineering and physics, but he never received a degree. And most of the things he learned, he got from practical experience, just working in the field, uh, experimenting with his hands, which I find very impressive to know that he accomplished so much without um, a tutor or a mentor to lead him on his way. Okay. I mean, I really think that that says a lot about his mind and his ingenuity, because a lot of times you kind of go off of the work of the person who came before you. And, but yeah, you know, he was out there just kind of figuring himself this stuff out for himself for a short time. He actually worked, um, for Thomas Edison. And I believe that there was some um, rivalry there because Nikola Tesla was so obviously genius at the things he was doing. And Edison was known for stealing ideas, <laughs> not giving people credit. Thomas Edison was a little bit of a shit Lord. We could do a whole episode about Thomas Edison. Do you know that Thomas Edison electrocuted an elephant to death just to demonstrate to the public how dangerous Nikola Tesla's form of electricity was? Even though it wasn't, he like just, perp- he it was all a publicity stunt. He just executed this animal. <laughs> I would love to do an episode just about how like shit that we're taught in school is like very wrong. Thomas Edison was fucked. Yeah, because in American schools, we're taught that how important he was and yeah. none of that stuff. Well, all right. So the rivalry with Tesla and Edison is pretty well known. People generally know that Tesla worked for Edison. They had 
a um, professional competition Mm -hmm. with each other. It went very deep. Um, And I'll get into a story later on where Edison and Tesla's rivalry, even after not talking to each other for years, prevented both of them from winning a Nobel Prize, Uh, which is kind of funny how petty it is. But before I get to that, I want to talk about some of the cool experiments Tesla was known for. Here's what's really fascinating about Nikola Tesla. He was around at the time when electricity and our understanding of electricity in the modern age was just beginning. We didn't really know much. In fact, they were inventing electricity. I mean, nobody invented electricity. It was discovered. Yeah. But they were inventing ways to harness it. Direct current, uh, DC electricity was what Edison had invented. Alternating current, or AC, was what Nikola Tesla had invented. The band ACDC in ca- in- encapsulates all of this uh, with the name <laughs> of their band and their song thunderstruck <clears throat> exactly <laughs> but tesla was able to do things that we have never seen since mm. and kind of don't understand how he did them one of these things was wireless lighting in the wow. year in the year 1890 1890 Nikola Tesla was experimenting with lights that could be powered with no wires attached to them using something he called near field inductive um, power. Basically, the idea is that you emit an electrical current. I emit an electric current. These microphones, everything. Yeah. We're living in like this matrix of electrical waves and energy and light that's going off in all directions. Yeah. Um, And Tesla had found a way to harness that without plugging in a cable from one item to the other. Um, They say that he did demonstrations where he would hold something called Geissler tubes or even incandescent light bulbs, hold them in his hands, walk around the room with them, and they would glow. This is why I consider Tesla to be a wizard. Yeah. This is magical. This is the year 1890. Somebody who was there for one of these demonstrations um, gave a description. They said, within the room were suspended two hard rubber plates covered with tinfoil about 15 feet apart. These served as terminals of wires leading from transformers. So the wires were connected to these plates in the room. And these plates would just emit energy into the room. When the current was turned on, the lamps or tubes, which had no wires connected to them, but lay on a table between the two plates and could be held in your hands, would light up, were made luminous, and could be moved around almost any part of the room. That's cool. Almost any part of the room. So you could move. If you went too far to the side of the room, they would start to dim. But as you came closer to the wireless power source, they would glow. You could set them on the table. You could put them on the shelf. You could do whatever you want with them. Just a glowing tube of light powered by the energy in the room. Um, These were the same experiments uh, performed by Tesla previously in London, the observer noted, uh, where they produced much wonder and astonishment. That's cool. Yeah. Still to this day, still to this day, we don't have this technology. That's crazy. I was about to say, I wonder what those plates were. Was it like just like a a dinner plate or was it like a kind of like a rubber plate, a rubber plate? Okay. So it was a rubber plate to stop kind of, uh, I'm assuming a buffer for the electricity so that it wouldn't just mark yeah. out and electrocute people. But okay. That, that plate turned it into like a near field emission power source, which is what he called it. This ran off of near field emission. I wonder if it was like dangerous to be around like low level i have pictures of tesla doing this okay not photographs but i have a illustration so let's go to the close-up camera check this out yeah i wonder if it's dangerous to be around low level electricity like that right well this is all a form of radiation yeah uh there are the people in the audience watching there's tesla holding the incandescent tubes in his hands they look like swords but we can assume that they are just lighting up yeah um what did you just say? What was your question? Oh, I was just saying I wonder if it was dangerous to be around like low level electricity like that. Yeah. Well, um, Tesla was a genius, but he also didn't know everything because I did read at one point he 
was he had a theory that electricity could make people smarter. Oh. And he wanted to improve students' test scores by electrocuting their brains. No. So I don't think he fully uh, had a grasp on like <laughs> radiation or side effects of what he was doing. But I he thought, would learn real quick. I would I would love to see one of these. Yeah. Could you imagine real quick going back in time to the 1890s and you're going to an expo? Imagine like the piano, you know, from the old West Saloon. Like that. <laughs> you're walking down Main Street, USA, in Disneyland. Yeah. You go into a lecture hall wood paneling every it's only men in there because it's the 1890s yeah every guy in there is like dressed up in one of those old timey tuxedos where it's just like the cinch tie up to like <laughs> the weird collar with like a hat on and nikola tesla is in there holding like light bulbs that just light up magically and he's like <laughs> passing them around and you're just holding a, a glowing light bulb and an electrical powered light bulb in your hand but it's not plugged in anything and it's 1890 how do you blow and away your grandchildren and your great grandchildren will never experience this technology, but you don't know it. Nope. It's wild. Yeah, that's wild. This is some wild stuff. Okay, so in 1915, <clears throat> supposedly, Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison were both nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Okay. I say supposedly because the the Nobel uh, group denies that this happened, but uh, the Nobel. Peace Prize in 1915 went to two other scientists for their development of X-ray technology. Um, however, um, biographers of Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla have come out and said that they have found evidence that Tesla and Edison were, in fact, offered the Nobel Peace Prize but they had to accept it together. Oh, no. And they refused. It makes because sense. Because yeah. they fucking despised each other. <laughs> and it was literally, that was the reason. Oh, my they God. They couldn't get them. <clears throat> Apparently, the, the Nobel people had to deal with Edison shit-talking Tesla and diminishing his uh, accomplishments and being like, this guy doesn't deserve the award. Yeah. And Tesla doing the same thing, being like, Edison is a thief. He didn't invent any of this stuff. He doesn't deserve the award. And they were constantly fighting, trying to get the other person to not receive the award. And then people have even gone on to say that Edison was very wealthy and Tesla was very unwealthy and that the prize, <clears throat> the cash prize of, uh, it came with a cash prize of $20,000. For the time was probably For the a time. lot. Yeah. And Edison did not want Tesla to receive the $20,000 and could personally afford to not get the $20,000. <laughs> and so he refused the award, what a dick. Uh, the prize out of spite. <laughs> Either way, Tesla and Edison never received a Nobel Peace Prize. They were both nominated uh, later on in life, but they did not get the award. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I wondered if like later on in life they were kind of given an honorary one. No. They no, they weren't. They were, they were not. Jesus Christ. They had their shots. They fought. Fuck it. They don't get the award. They they lost out because they were so petty. <clears throat> um, here's something you may have heard of. Tesla was in love with a pigeon. Oh, I have not heard about this. You didn't hear you've never heard about the pigeons? No. So Tesla <laughs> He was a he was the earliest furry. He may have been. <laughs> he struggled to secure finances he has a whole story where basically he was in new york for a long time my phone just went off just <laughs> to make this an official episode yeah he moved to colorado to do his experiments in in a uh i believe like a lower pressure altitude environment so he moved to the mountains of colorado because okay. he, he had a feeling that that would affect his experiments this is what is depicted in the movie the prestige because oh yeah, yeah they go to meet tesla at his colorado laboratory um <clears throat> he was building massive Tesla coils there the size of like three story buildings. And he was working on wireless energy and communication that could be broadcast all over the world. Almost like an early precursor precursor to like a broadcast tower. Okay. Radio tower. Was this uh, before <clears throat> the telephone as well? I'm not sure when okay. the telephone arrived, but he kind of ran out of money. Hmm. And he had to move back to New York and he was very poor and Tesla famously refused to accept charity 
But some of the companies that had made a lot of money off of his earlier inventions thought it was bad publicity to have their like world famous star inventor basically living as a homeless person. Yeah. So they would give him a consultation fee is what they called it. But it was just charity. They were just giving him money so that he could live. Uh, So he lived in hotels. Mm -hmm. He had a habit of living in a hotel for a few years and racking up a bill and then just skipping out and leaving the bill unpaid. And he would do this over and over again. He uh, said, oh, sorry. Continue. What? No, I was going to say he sounds like a like a, a fictional character almost like yeah. like this sounds like the, the Tesla movie I would watch, you know. So while he was living in these hotels, mm. he spent a lot of time um, walking to parks to clear his mind. And he made it a daily habit to feed the pigeons in the parks. Um, he became obsessed with pigeons. He started bringing them back to his hotel rooms and he would nurse injured birds uh, back to full health. Um, he even got evicted from a hotel room at one point because all of the other tenants were pissed off because there was bird shit <laughs> all over the side of the building because he was attracting so many pigeons to the hotel. But that's not the weirdest part. He spent over $2,000 to care for one bird in particular and even developed a device that would support her comfortably while she had a broken wing and leg. Um, he was interviewed once about this pigeon. Mm. This is what he said. I have been feeding pigeons, thousands of them for years, but there was one. A beautiful bird, pure white, with light gray tips on its wings. That one was different. It was a female. I had only one wish. And, and that was to call her. Oh, no, I had only to wish and call her and she would come flying to me. I loved that pigeon as a man loves a woman. And she loved me. As long as I had her, there was purpose in my life. Tesla was in love with a pigeon. The more you say about him, the more he sounds like a Hellboy character. Like, this is wild. (laughs) All of this, everything I've said is a precursor to the next part because literally I only wanted to talk about the next part. Okay. (laughs) But I had to like give, I had to just give you all the weirdness. Yeah, yeah. uh, the, The backstory on Tesla's entire life. Well, I wanted to talk about Rasputin's dick, so I had to go through (laughs) 30 minutes of that bullshit. (laughs) So uh, Tesla, when he got older, he kind of was forgotten about. Okay. And in 1931, he was turning 70, I believe, 75. And a journalist who had befriended him, a person by the name of Kenneth Sweezy, organized a celebration for Tesla's 75th birthday. And he made a bit, he was a, he was a journalist. So he publicized it and he made a huge deal out of it. And what ended up happening was Tesla received congratulatory letters on his 75th birthday from more than 70 different pioneers in the science and engineering world, including Albert Einstein. Whoa. He was also featured on the cover of Time Magazine for his 75th birthday celebration. Do you have a photo of that? I don't. I should have. I should have brought it. But the caption said, all the world is his powerhouse and noted his contributions to the electrical power industry over the past generation. And this was post Edison light bulb. Yeah, this is he's 75 years old. That's cool. This is just a few years before his death. Yeah. The party makes him feel so good (laughs) that he decides I'm going to do this every year. (laughs) And from have a birthday. (laughs) Have a birthday, basically a birthday convention. <laughs> he basically Tesla con. Yeah. He basically decides to have a massive celebration and hold a press conference every year for the rest of his life. That's cool. On his birthday, uh, where he would put out large spreads of food and drink, including dishes that he himself created created not only was he inventing yeah magic light bulbs he was inventing new food to eat i want to go to this party yeah to be real i want to eat a tesla dish yeah i couldn't find any information of what he created 
Somebody out there needs to do the research. Yeah, please. What food did Tesla make? Pizza. So, uh, over the course of the next few years, at his birthday press conference, he would announce what has gone on to be the wildest technology that Tesla was ever known for. Okay. So, the following year, 1932, at his birthday press conference, he claimed that he invented a motor that could run on, quote, cosmic rays. He said that he had discovered a new form of energy that was violently opposed to Einsteinian physics. Oh. Whatever Einsteinian physics are, this is the opposite of it. This energy could be tapped by using an apparatus that would be cheap to run and would last 500 years. An engine that could run off cosmic rays, that's the opposite of everything you've come to understand in the world of physics, that's cheap to run and will not break down for 500 years. I assume Einsteinian uh, physics means the, the E equals MC squared. Something like that. I could be so off, but... At this party in 1932, he also told reporters that he had made a breakthrough in metallurgy and was developing a way to photograph the retina of an eyeball to record the thoughts of the person. I have an illustration of his mind-reading camera. <laughs> uh, Ready? Oh. Uh, let, me, let me give me a second here. Let me pull it up. Mind-reading camera. Here it is. A camera that can <laughs> look, that can, what did I say? Record the, photograph the retina and record your thoughts. So you see the little squiggly line? Yeah. That's uh, the, the retina scan being recorded. And then it's like projecting what he's thinking of on the other side There's of the wall. There's no way that doesn't kill you. There's no way. Tesla said that he had invented this. Okay. Because I'm just imagining he's like blasting like gamma rays into someone's brain. I This guy already invented magic light bulbs that yeah. glow in your hands <laughs> and you can walk around with them. Now he has a camera that can record your thoughts. It can That's read cool. your mind. I want that now. It gets better. In 1934, maybe you've heard of this. Tesla told reporters that he had designed a super weapon that he claimed could end all wars. It, it kind of like Einstein. It came to be known as Tesla's death ray. Oh. Have you ever heard of Tesla's death ray? No. I've never heard of it. You never heard? No. Like I've always heard this that like Nikola Tesla claimed that he invented a death ray that could kill people. Uh, it's not the brain with, thing? No, it's not that. Okay. With invisible like energy uh, and he tried to sell it energy. to different governments around the world, but nobody ever took it. And so he never developed it. Let me tell you about this death. Yeah. Ray. Let me tell you about this death. Ray. Tesla described it as a defensive weapon that would be put up along the border of a country and be used against attacking ground based infantry or aircraft. It'd be anti aircraft or anti infantry. Tesla never revealed detailed plans of how the weapon worked in his lifetime. But in 1984, they surfaced. I want to point out that I was reading at the time that Tesla was like, uh, he grew up in the age where people had just invented uh, air travel. Okay. And it was really interesting to hear him talk about how the fear of a city being bombed from an aerial attack was like an existential crisis to the people who lived in Europe. Yeah which I just think is interesting because we are here on the other side of history knowing that that did happen a lot. Like airplanes dropped a lot of bombs on 100%, cities. 100%, yeah. But uh, in like 1915, 1920, that was like the worst thing imaginable. It hadn't yet happened and people were so scared <laughs> that airplanes were going to drop bombs on cities. Yeah. And so Tesla's death ray was like a defense against that potentially happening. Okay. They never built the death rays and the airplanes did drop the bombs on the cities. Tesla was right. He knew. Um, let me see here. I know that uh, I think my notes might be a little out of order here, but I did read that Tesla tried to sell the death ray to the United States government, the British government, the Russian government, 
uh, and I believe the Serbian government. The British government offered him $30 million for the project, but that was just early negotiations. Negotiations eventually fell through, and he didn't get it. Um, he does. He he thinks that the Russian government tried to steal the plans for the device from him because he came back to his hotel room once and found that it had been broken into and all of his papers had been rummaged through. But he later told a reporter they would never find the plans for the death ray because he had not committed them to paper, that they had all been in his mind. Dude, what a smart dude. But in 1984, we did find the plans. Oh. Um, the plans described the weapon as an open-ended vacuum tube with ga- uh, gas. I'm just going to read this. This yeah. may not make any sense. Gas jet seal that allows particles to exit a method of charging slugs of tungsten or mercury to a millions to millions of volts and directing them in streams through electrostatic repulsion. So in layman's terms, basically they have an open-ended vacuum, which means they're using air. Yeah. Uh, they have some way to charge the particles in this air to millions of volts. And then they can point this vacuum or these particles at, at a group of people or at airplanes and shoot them um, in a mass burst. So millions of highly charged particles piercing your body or your aircraft, rendering you dead instantly. This is, oh. Te- Tesla's death ray. This is the there's a there's a movie Real Geniuses. No, with Val Kilmer. Uh uh-uh. oh, it's like around 1984. Oh, and uh, yeah, it's like these super smart genius MIT students get tasked to build a laser beam, and then they do it, and it's like like hijinks ensue. Like they're trying to like stop the government from buying the plans. Anyway, that reminded me of that. It's nice. it's lining up here. Let me pause on the death ray. I'll come back to that a little bit later. The following year, 1935, at his 79th birthday, Tesla claimed that he had invented a new type of mechanical oscillator. He told reporters that a version of his oscillator had caused an earthquake in his 46 East East Houston Street laboratory in lower Manhattan. Houston. Houston. Ah, there you go. Paid me back, buddy. (laughs) East Houston Laboratory in Lower Manhattan in 1898. He claims that he caused an earthquake with his oscillator that destroyed his laboratory. I know he lived in New York. That's cool. He also went on to tell reporters that with this oscillator, he could destroy the entire Empire State Building with, quote, five pounds of air pressure. He, He started turning into an evil genius towards the end. Hey, buddy, let me tell you something. You give me five pounds of air pressure, five pounds. I'm taking that whole building down. You ain't bro. taking shit down. You ain't seen the oscillator I got, bro. You ain't taking shit down. I see you. You remember that earthquake from East Houston back in '98? <laughs> that was me, bro. Don't fuck with me. That wasn't that wasn't you. That was your fucking sister, bro. Five pounds of air <laughs> pressure and the whole building's coming down. That's fuck fucking you. St- <laughs> we just yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's that's how the interview went. That was Tesla with the reporters right there. Um, so. A few years later, uh, he, he died a few years later, mm-hmm. but uh, at his final um, press conference, the reporters asked him, they're like, get, can we get back to that death ray? Is that an experimental thing? Can we talk about that? And he said, it is not an experiment. I have built it. I have demonstrated it and I have used it. Only a little time will pass. Before I can give it to the world. Wow. Uh, but Tesla died before he was able to give his death ray to the world, sadly. How did he die? This is a fucked up story. Um, oh. He was, I think I lost it. Yeah, here we go. So that, that same year in 1937, at the age of 81, after midnight, one night, Tesla left his hotel, the New Yorker, uh, to make his regular commute to go feed pigeons at the library. He, he feeds pigeons at midnight because he's a weirdo. While crossing the street a couple blocks from the hotel, Tesla was unable to dodge a moving taxi cab and was thrown to the ground. Even back in 1937, those taxi cabs, yeah. they don't stop for anything. Nope. His back was severely wrenched 
and three of his ribs were broken in the accident. But the full extent of his injuries will never be known because Tesla famously refused to go to doctors. And so after he broke three of his ribs and cracked his spine, he just went on uh, about his day. He was, oh, he was never able to fully recover. That lasted for about five years because in 1943, he died alone in his hotel room. The official cause of death has been ruled a blood clot, but they believe it was basically this accident marked the beginning of the end for him, and he just slowly deteriorated over time. That's a bummer. He was discovered by a maid mm. uh, because he put a do not disturb sign on his hotel room and they left it there for two days before they went in and found his dead body. They that found his dead body. Stunk. It probably stunk so bad. Yeah. Uh, this is funny. Can we go to this? Close up? Oh, yeah, close up. So the New Yorker Hotel is still there and they still have the room that he died in. Oh. <laughs> and they have a plaque on the door. I'd be pissed. <laughs> I'm you, like, fuck. You I can't think. read the plaque uh, from the camera, but let me read it to you. Yeah, sure. You can go back to the wide shot. It says three 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 two seven. Then it's Braille, so if, if you're blind, you can read the. Yeah. It's funny. You can read Thank the God. room number, but none of the words no. below. <laughs> so it's just like, yep, this is the room. The Nikola Tesla room. The great inventor Nikola Tesla occupied this room from 1933 to 1943. He invented the system of AC electrical power that is used throughout the world today, including the generator motor and method of trans transmission. He also holds the patent for wireless communication. Perhaps his most famous projects is the electrical power plant at Niagara Falls, New York. He uh, helped develop that power oh, plant. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then they got some pictures of Tesla. Uh, oh. Yeah, Nikola Tesla stayed in this room. I'd say he stayed in this room. Stayed in this room for two days before they ever found the body. How come this plaque doesn't mention the fact that the motherfucker died in this room? Mm. How come the plaque doesn't mention that his ghost is still in there right now? Because they want like fucking nerds to come by. This is like, so Ooh. cheeky. To oh, did you know I'm in Tes Tesla room? Tesla stayed in this room for a little while. Uh huh. And what else? Breathed his last breath in that <laughs> uh, bed? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you want to include that in your little plaque, New Yorker Hotel. Just found that interesting. Yeah, no, that was awesome. Um, the story doesn't end there. Okay. You would think that my story ends with the death of Tesla, but it does not. Because I'm fascinated with this death ray. And they Me too. They found the plans for the death ray in 1984. So the next logical question is, did anybody ever try to build the death ray? The answer is yes. Yeah, Val Kilmer, dude. No. <laughs> Professor Adrian Chiok okay. of I University, Japan, claimed in a press release in 2021 that after 10 years of development and after being funded by the Malaysian government, he was able to build Tesla's death ray. Oh, my God. I have a video. Oh, no. <laughs> Before we hit play on this video. Yeah. There were two videos. They were two minutes each. I only have the second video here in the interest of time. I know people out there don't have four minutes to waste. In the first video, he basically explains that this is a much, much smaller version of the Tesla death ray. Okay. Same technology, same plans, but on a much smaller scale. Then you notice what looks to be like is that in the in the wide shot? Can be oh people can't see it. Oh shit! Can we scoot us ourselves up? Do that. No no no. Can we move ourselves to the top corner? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Boom. Looks to be a block of butter. That is actually a block of cheese. Oh. <laughs> and this scientist, Adrian Chiok, says that now I don't know if I believe this, but I'm not a scientist. That the cheese is very similar to human muscle tissue. All right. That's like, yeah, it's like getting like ballistics gel and shit like that. Too, That's all yeah. you need to know. So okay. they're going to do a ballistics test of this Tesla death ray on okay. this block of cheese. Let's okay. let it play. This is in the COVID age, so he's got a mask on, you know. Oh, this is recent? It's 2021. Shit. I don't like that we're building death rays in 2021. <laughs> 
got a laptop running Windows XP or some shit. He basically explains that the particles get supercharged, as I already explained, and they are directed kind of like a laser pointer mm. out the tip of an emitter. So that's the emitter, and it's facing the cheese. Okay. Look at that. You can put his hand in front of it? It's off now. Oh. Look at that. Look at what it did. That's That cheese has been hit by a death ray. <laughs> Look at that, bro. Does he turn it on? He did. Oh, okay. That's the aftermath. Oh, shit. I wonder if they can't be in the room when they turn it on. No. He turned it on. Oh, oh. When? I didn't see it. The beginning of the video. What the fuck? It's a death ray. It's silence. That's scary. So, like, he's turning it on here? Yeah. Oh, it's, it was... Oh, shit. That's scary. I thought he was gonna like flip a switch and we're gonna see like a fucking beam of energy. I know you thought it would yeah. be like a Frankenstein moment. Go to yeah. the, go to the other side of the cheese. Look at that. It went through the whole block. <laughs> dude, it's like fucking dude. The particles have been electrified to millions of volts. It melted the cheese. That could be your brain. I want to see the wall behind hey, it. That might not look deadly, but imagine if that was your brain. Imagine you had that would a little, kill you, yeah. little pinhole leaking cheese out of your dome. <laughs> We can cheese out of your dome. Yeah. Also, I'm going to reiterate. This is a small scale version of the death ray. So. Oh, yeah. Like a real one. Will like make you like a fucking circle. Yeah. Or you get hit by like a hundred million of those little holes. <laughs> anyway, so we're melting cheese over here. That was awesome. That. Everybody is the Tesla death ray. We did it. We have it. R.I.P. Tesla. And that is everything I have to say about Nikola Tesla. And I believe. Oh, I have, I have more stuff if you want to get Oh, you it. got more? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so. I was going to say, that's that's the end of our show, but we got we got just a little more. I'll, I'll try to get through it fast. I don't want to waste people's time here. But uh, just a couple of things here. I found this article. I wanted to kind of figure out like modern or like, uh, yeah, like extremely modern wizards. Okay. So I found this uh, article that uh, reads, uh, this sp this spells trouble. Real life Dumbledore opens world's first wizard school. Oh no! So uh, a real life Dumbledore. <laughs> this guy's name is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing this name too. Uh, Aberon Zell Ravenheart. Yeah, you got it. He's 68 and uh, he's dedicated his life to studying the dark arts. I have a photo of him somewhere. I think. Uh, or maybe I don't. There's a photo here. I is could, this the real guy? This is the real guy. That's him, dude. Okay, yeah, he looks like a real life Dumbledore. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna read a little bit from this article here. If you ever read Harry Potter and wonder if wiz wizards really do walk among us, perhaps behind a secret train platform or in secret communities, I can tell you they're absolutely real. Uh, it says Oberon from California. Today, Aberon, uh, his school, the, the Gray School of Wizardry, is the first wizard school to be officially recognized as an academic establishment. Whoa. We got accredited, baby. Uh, he teaches like wand making and spell casting. Um, and uh, I have a, a list of other things he teaches at the school, but I have this funny photo of him at the supermarket. He's just chilling. Imagine you go to the supermarket and see this motherfucker. Dude can't grow his own food. Use a spell. I'm with you. <laughs> For real, dude. Like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, the magic community uh, refers to him as the real Dumbledore. Um, but he has claimed that he's been doing magic pre-Harry Potter. But has kind of, like, used the mystique of Dumbledore, Dumbledore to kind of, like, get people interested in his school. Um, but he's been doing... Magic since 1980s, since the 1980s. Okay. Um, but his biggest claim to fame is that he claimed to, apparently I didn't know this, but with a, a sign of being a true wizard is that you can create a unicorn. I didn't know that either. So he says he, he created the world's first unicorn, <laughs> but this article got cheeky with it. They were kind of like, uh, using surgery on a goat, he, he made this unicorn. What? Um, yeah, I have a photo. I'll show it when I get to the next page. 
But yeah, he and uh, he went around the country with this unicorn and, uh, you know, he, he toured it at uh, s- local circuses and stuff. Using surgery on a goat? Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah, you see. <laughs> Yo, you can't do that. <laughs> I know for real. Uh, but him and his wife, Morning Glory, who's 63, uh, together, they kind of practice magic together. Um, I have some photos of him and his wife here. And the the unicorn, so that's him and his wife now. That's them, and that's the unicorn. Uh, let's let's move this into yeah yeah. Frame. You see my notes there, but whatever. That's okay. Nobody's looking. <laughs> There's him yeah. in morning glory. What a stud, dude. They that's them well. now. Um. So yeah, that's kind of that. Excuse me. Yeah, he has a school. Excuse me again. Uh, where he teaches. Mathematics, uh, quantum entanglement, cosmology, metaphysics, lore, wart cunning, which is herbal medicine and ancient sciences. So if you want to get hip on being like, if I'm this, sorry, did was quantum physics in there? I don't think this guy is quantum quali- entanglement. I don't think this guy is uh, qualified to be doing physics lectures. Uh, this he- guy fucking <laughs> sewed a horn onto the face of a goat. Why am I going to fucking study physics with you're not a scientist? <laughs> well, let me tell you, he's also a published author, dude. Yeah. He uh, has many textbooks on wizardry out there. Uh, he wrote this one called uh, The Bible of Wizardry. And then he wrote another one called like The Grimoire the, uh, for the Apprentice Wizard. And you okay, have to. A grimoire is a book of spells. Yeah. It's a magical book. So you have to buy these uh, books if you want to go to his school. Oh, college textbooks. Um, the part. That's where all the money goes. Exactly. Uh, he has like 735 students uh, at his school, which I was impressed by that number. A hundred of whom are trainees. Uh, and they're they're all under 18. So he has like a little. Oh, nice. He's got a hundred minors. A uh, hundred minors learning under magic. His, under his. Lord. I, well, uh, I have a video of oh. him talking about the school. <laughs> let's, let's go to it. I like it already. I'll move this down. Welcome to the Gray School of Wizardry. I am your headmaster, Oberon Zell Ravenheart. The Gray School offers a seven-year program of apprenticeship studies in wizardry. This guy's going to be dead in seven years. <laughs> I love all his nerdy shit. We have Whoa. 16 different departments. Each oh, yeah. He's got a display case full of toys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Upon completion of your studies, you'll be certified as a journeyman wizard. You can be a journeyman Please wizard. Check out your house oh, I can go from town to town <laughs> uh, getting wizard jobs. As these are people you can turn to for help on most school issues. The school has three areas. Academic studies, social forums, and our virtual campus in Second Life. Sure uh, would you hear that? Virtual campus in Second Life, dude. Sure to check out oh. three. Where's the class the where we break down the uh, schematics of the USS Enterprise? <laughs> where's the uh, we do surgery on a goat a cool class? From our available collection. The basic Whoa, dude! Oh, real magic oh, content. Ma- magic confirmed. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, good. I don't have to ask for credentials now. Whoa, he changed the book. So is this uh, movie magic? Is this a form of film school? I, I wonder. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I did like at the end he casts a spell. I don't know if you want to keep watching until you see that. Of course. T-shirts and magical supplies and regalia may be purchased from the school store Magic Alley. Ooh, Magic In Alley. Magic I Regalia. Like say a few words. Synchronicity. Oh. Serendipity. Uh-huh. Synergy. Epiphany. Thank you. I hope that you a spell? Did he just curse us? I think he cursed us, dude. Wizard. Oh, directed by Nikki Kirby. Thank you, Nikki Kirby. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. I have a, a couple you know, more things, but yeah. I, I love that this... Uh, course curriculum is seven years long that's <laughs> just, that's fucking awesome i just realized he said seven years yeah. that's awesome i'm yeah. glad i i joined this group when i'm uh 22 and why, by the time i'm 29 i'm certified as a journeyman wizard <laughs> you've you've just wasted my entire life 
You just took my youth away from it's me. It's longer than high school. Yeah. Like how fucking long do you need to be in this school before you realize it's bullshit? <laughs> I'm not usually the one on this show to come out here and show you something and be like, it's bullshit. Oh no. I, I wanted you to do this seven years with this dude. Like, what are you really learning? I don't, I, I wish I was trying so hard to find, um, footage from the school, but there was none. There was a lot of like, I kept finding this. There's like this four day LARP wizard school in Poland okay. and people kept like attributing it to him. But I was like, that's, it's not that. Uh, but if anyone out there has attended the Gray's school of wizard, or if you graduated, if you graduated, <laughs> you spent seven years there. That's awesome. I didn't even think about that. Um, if you go by the time you're, when you're 13, you get out when you're 20. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I bet it's like nights. It sounds like night school, like to get your GD. Like <laughs> yeah. anyway, I have a couple of uh, memes and stuff. If you want All right, to let's look, do it. Go through that really fast. Oh, I wanted to show you a classic. I wanted to go back. Back to the old internet days. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. Just wanted to go back to the classic time of, of wizardry. There. I, uh, I forgot that they said sleep in this video. Yeah, yeah, I, sleep. I, I always remember lightning bolt, lightning, lightning bolt, bolt, lightning bolt. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember what I have next. Here. I have no commentary. on that. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's ancient good, history. This is a good video. Um, here's a meme. Unplugging and then plugging the router. Me, grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> so a little magic meme for you there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, oh, uh, this one's a, this one's a thinker. Okay. So, uh, I learned in New Zealand, there is a politician wizard. I have the Wikipedia page here. He's just known as like, they just have a wizard politician and comedian. The wizard of New Zealand. Yeah. So, uh, and as you know, wizards in the USA aren't, aren't a good time. No. Is that it? That's the whole meme? Yeah. I, oh, I thought it was going to deteriorate. Oh, no, no, no. But, uh. This one was a thinker for me. I had to take a second. I was like, oh, I get it. Anyway, uh, and then I just wanted to show the classic photo. There's all this text on the screen. That I need to go away, but I just always really enjoyed this photo of Gandalf with the with the laptop. Yeah, uh, the, the real magic is code. <laughs> the real, yeah, I saw so many memes that were like, the wizard has to download his software. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much what I have. <laughs> That was awesome. Just hey, want to end it with a that's little, a that's a great way to goofs. end. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's our episode of Mega Strange. Uh, check us out next Wednesday for the mailbag. Next Saturday for another full length episode. This is Derek and Johnny keeping things strange. You keep yourself strange. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Serendipity. Serenity. <laughs> I don't remember the third word he said. Anyway, good night. Hey everybody, if you like this video, be sure to click on some more videos from the Mega Strange podcast. We have tons of hotline episodes and tons of full-length episodes that are going to keep you entertained and scared. So stick around with us for a while. Watch some more videos. Shoot.